Coming up on Tech News Today, airport scanners. We find out how to make them make you look a little less nakedy. Also, do you want an RFID in your boarding pass? Would you say yes if it meant you could get another drink? And Google wants to integrate Microsoft Office into Google Docs. In fact, they're making it happen. We'll tell you how. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Tech News Today for Monday, November 22nd, 2010. Tech News Today is brought to you by Ford and Voice Activated Sync, featuring true hands free calling, turn by turn directions, 911 assist, and more. Available exclusively on Ford, Lincoln, and Mercury vehicles. For more details, visit SyncMyRidePodcast.com. And by Gazelle, the easy way to sell or recycle the used gadgets lying around your home or office. Don't just sell it, Gazelle it. For a 5% bonus payment for your used gadgets, go to Gazelle.com, bonus code TNT. Welcome to Tech News Today. I'm Tom Merritt. I'm Sarah Lane. I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm Jason Howell. And this is the show where we kick around the tech news of the day. Newspapers are dead. Dead, I tell you. I'm kicking that. Kick the newspapers, too. Kick them out the door. Yeah. Why are they dead? Because I just read a newspaper this morning. No, you didn't. Rupert. <laughs> <laughs> You're wrong. <laughs> Rupert Murdoch uh, is planning a tablet-only newspaper called The Daily. Ooh. I'm assuming it will come out daily. Mm. Uh, it will be delivered uh, at first just to the iPad, but they're going to uh, expand it to Android. Uh, it, may, it may launch on Probably Android, all too. Tablets. This is all all from the um, Women's Wear Daily report. Seriously. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. where yeah. I get that's all of my hardcore Women's Wear journalism. Daily broke the story, and New York <laughs> Times confirmed it. Uh, it'll be early next year, 99 cents a week, or about $4.25 a month. They have a staff of 100 people for their newsroom. And they're going to try to be a New York Post goes to college feel. Um, we already have that on the internet. It's, it's called the Daily Beast. It's called free blogs. It's called, it's called everybody <laughs> every twenty something's blog. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, the the you go ninety nine cents a week for daily content. Okay, well, it's not gouging anybody. That's somewhat of a decent price, but it's like Murdoch's. 20 something experiment with the news you know it's like gossipy i just don't i guess you could aggregate that all in one place and get something out of it but do you think it hurts them if it bombs no well then why I not i don't you know think, if, 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 I don't think if they're just employing a couple 20 sums you know 100 20 100 something. okay well there you go i still and they're playing around a, with this new of kind a, of delivery mechanism sure. you know, that, it's only it's an going experiment. to be on the tablet you will not be able to get it on the web and i think that's a mistake agreed I think you should be able to access it through a login on the web. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and possibly have some free content to draw people in. But saying, like, we're only going to deliver it on the tablet, on the tablet, I've got the web. And so you are still competing with everything on the web, but yet you are not competing when I'm on my computer. And so I may forget to read you. Does it somehow, though, play into the whole... People in the know are reading the daily. Hey, did you see the daily? Yeah, no, like I don't. I don't have a tablet. What happened? Oh, okay, if they yeah. break stories and they get enough people, enough influencers to right. do what you just said, maybe. Right. Uh, but they're gonna have to be really good for that to happen. Yeah, otherwise, yeah. it's very walled garden. Uh, it's cheaper than the paper edition, which is like seven forty a week or thereabouts. But. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's cheap. a great model, the idea of saying, you know what, we're going to build specifically for the Internet. We're going to have a newsroom of 100. Uh, the Daily Beast did something similar to that. They're a great publication, uh, and they just merged with Newsweek. So the Newsweek print publication is going to become the Daily Beast publication. I, I think it's probably easy to take pot shots at this, but I think it's a good experiment for Rupert Murdoch. The problem is it's coming from a position that doesn't, I don't know. It's not quite integrated. I, I've been trying out the London Times uh, app mm -hmm. on the iPad, and I like it. I I think it's I think it's good. I, I'd almost be willing to pay for it. The problem is I want it to work like the New York Times app, where I open up the app and the latest news is right there. But they go with this model where you have to download every day's paper. Ooh, yeah. And so I first of all, when I open the app, 
I have to wait for the issue to download, mm -hmm. and then it's not dynamically updated. It's just that it gets old, mm -hmm. and that's just artificial. I don't need, you know. Well, this I'm is, sure this the thinking the behind that is, if you were going to buy a paper, you'd have your, you know, fifty cents, and you'd buy it every day physically. Yeah, but we're already past that. I know. I mean, it's, that, that might have worked work in anymore. 1995 when mm -hmm. people were just getting used to using the internet. Right. But well, we're definitely yeah. in an area where we have both of these things going on. You like with this new online only or iPad only or tablet only, whatever it is. And then, you know, you've got the physical one where you pay a little bit more to get the physical product. And, and I think we'll see more and more of that as we do the transition to kind of digital only. I think you're right, though. We have to have a combination. Yeah. Going it, it, tablet only is a gimmick. Mm -hmm. You also figure Rupert Murdoch can afford to hire 100 people. And if the experiment doesn't work... Kind of a drop yeah, of the bucket. write it off. Uh, somebody who does get this whole business and has actually done the unthinkable in getting along with the movie industry is Netflix, and they've just decided to introduce to the United States their streaming-only plan. They already had this available in Canada, but in the United States, you'll be able to get the DVD plan or the streaming plan. The streaming plan will run you $8 a month. That's a dollar less than the current DVD plus streaming plan. However, the rub is that if you want to keep getting DVDs, the price goes up. One DVD plan is now $9. Uh, or I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. One DVD plan is now $10. Mm -hmm. Two DVDs, $14. Uh, and three DVDs is now $20. So you have the streaming and DVD plan you have to opt out of paying one more dollar per month. Yeah, they just kind of up the, the price on you. But you have the opportunity to go, you know, give up the, the physical disc. I have no problem with this. I, I never get discs in the mail. In fact, there's one Netflix DVD sitting on my How long It's your placeholder. Stand. It's yeah. your placeholder yeah. for what you usually Months use Netflix for, which uh -huh. is a streaming only service. It's yep. like it's like I'm physically yeah. incapable of watching it, but I stream Netflix movies all the time. Yep. So but, that's and, all I really and need. And that's what they found is that most of their subscribers do majority streaming. Yeah. Uh, so they're making the DVDs a premium, mm -hmm. and they've been brilliant at figuring out how to make this transition. It almost appears seamless the mm -hmm. way they're doing it. Question is, for me, am I going to keep my one DVD a month plan? Because there are still movies that aren't yes, available on streaming. Exactly. There are quite a few. But those movies might also be available on other carriers like Amazon On Demand, you know? Right. There's, there's, but then there's those rare things like, you know, yeah. whiskey galore, stuff like that. Barbarella. You, yeah. You know, for there's, $2 extra per yes. month, is it worth it to <laughs> yes. kind of keep your toe dipped in the water for those things yeah. that you have to Even if it means have you have a DVD sitting screen. around as a placeholder. Yeah, right. I mean, $2 a month. Yes, I think mm -hmm. if people yeah. really want that option, then yeah, it's but not, not going like, to rank your bank. This is just like the New York Times thing. Again, right. the, the, the transition between, oh, you know, having that physical option as well. I mean, you know, there was a point in time where computers had floppy disks as well as CD-ROMs. Right. You know, and then everything went optical. And, yeah. you know, it's evolution. Now, like, you know, how many of your machines here on the table even have an optical drive? This okay, one does. Two out, of, two out of three machines on the table have optical drives. <laughs> there you go. Right? <laughs> How many phones have optical drives? Say, hey, yeah. Oh, no. yeah. Uh -huh. uh, Google is uh, taking a step towards the integration of everything into everything else by uh, taking Docverse, a company they had bought, and reissuing it as a, uh, what, what are they calling this, this new thing of theirs? They're still Go calling it Docverse, aren't they're they? They're calling it Google Cloud Connect. Ah, which is a very Microsoft-like name, in mm -hmm. my opinion, which is perfect because what it does is connect your Microsoft Office to Google Docs. Actually, it's called Google Cloud Connect for Microsoft Office. <laughs> Even hey. more Microsoft. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know what? It, it needs to be like that because right now, like you said, for Microsoft Office, and that's all it's for. It's for Office 2003, 07, and 2010. But it's so far not for Open Office. Come on, Google. Now It's also not necessarily for Office for Mac. We don't know. Now, what about someone says, hold on a second. I open Office Docs in Google Docs all the time. Well, the difference here is that you would open up your Word doc, mm -hmm. and then you would have a toolbar at the top where you would just have a URL, and you could just go and copy and paste that URL to an IM with a friend, and they would be able to share that doc with you. So you don't actually have to leave the office environment. And that's the beauty of it. Because a lot of Some people... Some people want to stay there. Oh, yeah. I, I really like the... There's something to be said about how polished Word is, and it has become over the years. I mean, how, how much... How can you make Word better? And for some reason, they make a, just like... 2% better every year, mm -hmm. and then it adds up, you know, like Shift F7 to get your thesaurus. You don't get thesaurus with Shift F7 and Google Docs and your web browser. 
So is the so is Google's point here is let's get integrated with something that a lot of people use already, and then over time they'll just be comfortable using Google Docs more. They'll get in general. used to it because they'll learn how it works. Every once in a while they'll access their Docs from somewhere that they don't have their local Microsoft mm -hmm. Office, so they can use the Google Doc interface. It becomes more convenient. Uh, so yeah, I think it's trying to get them into the walled garden. Question is, why would you do that instead of Office Live? Well, there, there's. You brought up earlier that there's a feature that Office Live uh, doesn't have that that the Google Docs is the. Uh, the well, the, the real time collaboration. Uh, yeah. uh, supposedly, I haven't tried it, but supposedly Google Cloud Connect allows you to do the real time collaboration while using Microsoft Office. And so whereas there you go. Office so, Live so only did, allows the real time when you're using Office Live. So did Google not just beat them at their own game in that sense? Microsoft has got to be peeved about this in general, right? Well, Microsoft's had There's a tough time. There's nothing they can do about it, I guess. Since O3, they've been trying to roll this out with, uh, you know, th this kind of online collaboration system with, um, what is it, SharePoint Team Services, and, and even offering that as a as a free thing for Windows Server 2003 deployments, uh, and, and since then, and it's just been, uh, like, a lot of organizations just don't, or the small organizations that I've seen just don't implement it because it's lay hard. Mm. Yeah. Tis, tis la hard. All right, let's take a break and uh, thank you, Ford, for helping to bring tech news today to you today. The fact that we're able to do this show every day is thanks to our sponsors. Ford Voice Activated Sync, you've heard us talk about, is a great way to drive safely on the road and still be able to take uh, texts, be able to receive calls. I still say keep them short. And, you know, you don't want to be distracted on the road, but Ford Voice Activated Sync helps to minimize those distractions because you keep your hands on the wheel, you keep your eyes on the road, and you just tell it what you need done. Send a text message really quickly. That's not so bad. You just say, you know, tell Jason I'm running late. Pulls up Jason, types your message, sends it out, can read text messages to you as well. Uh, true hands-free calling, turn-by-turn -turn directions, 911 assist and more. Available exclusively on Ford, Lincoln, and Mercury vehicles. You can make calls on pretty much any Bluetooth-enabled mobile phone. You just climb in and they connect. Uh, it gives you real-time traffic alerts with turn-by-turn -turn directions to get you around the traffic. That's kind of invaluable right there on its own. Weather, uh, the ability to manage playlists, all of that and more. Go check it out at a Ford dealer near you or go to SyncMyRidePodcast.com. That's Sync, S-Y-N-C, MyRidePodcast.com. Sync is standard on some Ford, Lincoln, Mercury models and optional on others. Uh, when you get in a car with Sync, it's a whole different driving experience. Check it out today. Big news just broke right before we got to the show. Attachmate. You guys know Attachmate. Oh, of course. What not. does Attachmate do, Tom? Well, um, in case you're not familiar, the <laughs> company, according to TechCrunch, primarily focuses on terminal emulation, legacy modernization, managed file transfer, and enterprise oh, fraud management software. Oh, Attachmate, of course, of course. I had a why senior we, moment. Why are we talking about Attachmate? Because they're buying Novell for $2.2 billion. Uh and, and Novell, obviously, a, a big company that many of you are familiar with. Also, part of this merger proposal has Microsoft acquiring a nice chunk of intellectual property from Novell. And I believe Novell has licensed intellectual property from Microsoft in the past, as well as a, there is an ongoing lawsuit over WordPerfect between Novell and Microsoft. So I guess this would resolve that. <laughs> It warms my heart a little bit to know that there's still legal battles over WordPerfect. <laughs> warms my heart to know that someone somewhere <laughs> is at least mentioning still WordPerfect. knows Perfect. what WordPerfect Even if it's is an illegal document. Yes. Yes. I could be honest. Kitchen and Howl, we don't even use that when we litigate. Yeah. We're on the Google Docs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Microsoft's not saying much about their role in the deal. They say we're pleased to be a part of the acquisition. Uh, Microsoft looks forward to continuing our collaboration with Novell into the future. blah de blah de blah de blah Another interesting thing about this uh, that you may or may not realize is the uh, colorful nature of Attachmate's founder and CEO, Jeffrey Hahn, who once famously turned himself in to authorities after being charged with animal cruelty, theft, and criminal mischief, and he uh, spent 10 days in jail in 2008. You know what the animal cruelty was all about? He killed 32 bison. Oh, that, I thought you were going to say kittens. That what? No, no. Bison. Bison. Uh, apparently, well, he had he had big he land, and his bison? neighbors bison wandered over into oh, his, his property. Oh, his neighbors bison. Yes. Violating bison that, old, that belong to thou someone. shalt not shooteth thy neighbors bison. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yes, it's uh, the second so, commandment. So, and then he turned himself in. Yeah. I shot the bison, but I didn't shoot the deputy. Easier than being on the <laughs> lamb when you're running a company. Or on you the know? bison. I got attachment to go to. Let's just. 
I'm going to turn myself in. <laughs> While we're talking about Microsoft, uh, they are singing a different tune today. Microsoft representatives uh, appearing on National Public Radio's Science Friday told uh, interviewer Ira that Ira Flato. the Connect motion controller was left open by design. Mm -hmm. uh, we wanted you to hack it. Yeah. He said, we we're actually, that kind he's of like, stuff. of course, we're legally protecting the proprietary software on the Connect, And of course, you know, we don't want people cracking open the hardware, but we didn't protect the USB connection on purpose because we wanted to see all of this wonderful hacking that's been going now, do on. Do they have to just say something like that so they don't keep looking Infuriate silly? Infuriate people. Well, yeah. part of it is like, okay, these were just different Microsoft people being quoted. You know, have they ever you know, uh, communicated on this? Is, is this, right. you know, Microsoft's a big corporation, you know, so. Uh, and then the other part is, I think it's kind of interesting that even Microsoft's own MSDN blog, uh, they've got, you know, uh, articles on how to use, um, they actually have a Visual Basic .NET and C Sharp library for using the Wiimote for, uh, for doing, you know, fun hackery stuff with, with Nintendo's Wii controller. So it's kind of... Yeah, I, I, th I think this is an internal, this is my theory. There was an internal discussion uh, after that first reaction from, a, was it a lawyer? I can't remember who put out the statement saying Microsoft protects its property and we'll go after anybody. Right. Uh, when Adafruit first put up the money for the challenge to hack the Connect, I think after the hacks came out and they saw what they were, there were people within Microsoft saying, look, this is not a problem. Let people right. do, we're only going to look bad if we come down on this stuff because there's cool stuff. That, and, they're, they're uh, find and, awesome. and, and so they came to a compromise to say, well, let's just say we left the USB open on purpose and leave it at that. That way we, we give the legal people some protection to say, like, don't go any further than that, sure. which someone will. Uh, and, 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 then, and then we look like the good guys. Well, that's typical backpedaling. You misconstrued what we said. Yeah, I mean, and we're great, not that uptight. Great things come from this. We're I mean, you, I don't know if you remember, but uh, Johnny Chung Lee, he, uh, he he's the one that came up with the you know multi-touch whiteboard and and uh, mm -hmm. specifically the head tracking one, where you would put the the Wii Remote uh, IR bar on your head and then the Wii Remote on the TV, and when you looked at it, the way that it changed the parallax and everything, it really looked like your TV had become 3D. I think he ended up like getting a job with Nintendo or someone. From doing that hackery, so yeah, this is all good stuff. And and my and for all of our poking fun, gentle fun at Microsoft here, uh, this is the right attitude to have. Uh, whether they did it on purpose or not, forget that. You want to encourage this kind of stuff because you get some really cool things out of it. Does it matter that they encourage this type of thing with something like the Connect, but they strongly discourage this type of thing with something like the Xbox? But it's, they're entirely different things. What they've said here is we don't mind somebody writing a driver that takes advantage of a connect point public plugged in by usb right with my with the xbox what they're objecting to is someone breaking copyright encryption gotcha. of the games yeah mm -hmm. or using it to like cheat on an xbox live service yeah you know, this doesn't impact either of those right mm -hmm. there no nobody gets hurt in these connect hats well unless unless you're flailing around or something or unless it's attached to a robot that eventually goes crazy and kills, and kills everyone yeah. exactly yeah. that's eventual right <laughs> Uh, Apple fans are very excited today at the release of iOS 4.2. Oh! A bigger uh, bigger deal for the iPad users than the iPhone users, actually, although it does unify the two platforms on, on one version of iOS. Uh, iPad gets the folders and the multitasking and all the things that the iPhone 4 has had uh, and, the, and the iPhone has had for uh, several months. Uh, also, the, uh, the lock button now is a mute button. Lock button's a mute button. Um, you get a couple perks um, down in your multitasking tab bar. You've got uh, an option to uh, fuss with your brightness, whereas before you had to go through your settings. Darren and I were just talking before the show. The only thing that's missing now in that area is Wi-Fi and easy access to Wi-Fi because yeah. you still got to go into Wi-Fi yeah. via your settings. I I'm going to lose my jailbreak if I update. But should I? I mean, is there enough compelling I, features? I can't imagine ever going back. Yeah? Yeah. The, the number one thing that I use with the jailbreak really is just backgrounder. I would just so. wait for them to jailbreak for two. You think so? Yeah. I mean, it's nice, well, but updating means syncing with I iTunes again, right? You and I don't agree about right. this. No, I don't I, know no we don't. Like, how yeah. can you not love? I don't. Is it? The iPad was 
half of the time it, it annoyed me because I couldn't multitask. Yeah, multitasking is not something. I, I there's so many other things that annoy me more that multitasking is the least of my worries on the iPad. Wow. I can't I can't have two windows. Yeah, up that, on the that iPad was still. for me. That was the workaround. Was the multitasking was oh well at least I can background IRC go to Safari and then keep flipping back and forth between it. That but is that never like out. it's like expose. It's very similar to expose. If you yeah, just think but right now way. I have the chat room. And I can flick on it, look at what Joshua Caleb just wrote, and then go right back See, to this other thing. Well, you know what? Well, on the paste, iPad, you go double click, chat room, it's double click, not back. that fast. It is so. No, it's okay, not. Okay, it's not that fast, but it's pretty also fast. Maybe they could add two buttons, like an windows. alt button and a tab button. It's better than me together. having to take Pandora, uh, uh, my iPad, and my iPhone to the gym because I couldn't exit out of Pandora if I also wanted to read Twitter on my iPad. Right. Now I just can take one device and everything's cool. So is it an over-the-air update or do I have to sync it with iTunes to get the goodness? Sync. Oh, okay. That means opening iTunes on my... That it yes. does. Yes, it does. Okay. Call you next year. When, when are they going to do over there? <laughs> anyway, uh, Apple also made Find My iPhone and Find My iPad services now free. Before, you had to be a subscriber to MobileMe, which kind of undercuts the reason to get MobileMe a little bit. That's the reason I have MobileMe. So mean, you don't need to pay for that syncing of calendars is, is a perk, but it's I'm not going to pay $100 a year for that anymore. And you can get plenty but of I free lose my services iPhone online to store all of your images and all that kind of stuff. Very true. So. And if you have the new version of Apple TV, not the old white one, but the little black hockey puck, you get a new version of Apple TV 4.1 so that it can play along with AirPlay mm -hmm. and you can play your music and your videos out of the iPod app onto your Apple TV right over Wi-Fi, which is kind of nifty. Uh, tried it out last night and a full feature length film in high def, no hiccups. Yeah. Plus you use your, uh, your iPhone as a remote. Yep. yep. Or your iPad. Or your iPad. Airport scanners are big news. Have you heard people talking about airport scanners lately? No. Yeah. We might have talked Scanning about it a couple of times. Bins, right? Yeah, because yeah. when you go through these backscatter scanners, uh, the pictures are very detailed. Well, the Washington Post reports that one researcher uh, helped develop software for the scanners that would distort the images captured on full-body scanners so they look like reflections in a funhouse mirror, <laughs> but potentially <laughs> dangerous <laughs> objects would still be clearly revealed. Um, the problem I have with this is uh, ha funhouse mirrors sometimes make you look like a big fat person when you're not. But so they all that's going to do is upset me <laughs> as well as distort me. Well, you don't if have I, to see it. I, like, I'm not that the fat. screener that has to see it. Yeah. <laughs> right. But knowing that they might think I'm hideous just makes I, it all the more upsetting. Yeah. I, I guess the idea is to make it no longer titillating. But come on, rule 34, I'm going to quote that. You know, if it exists, there's a porn for it. Yeah. You know, I'm sure somebody is excited to see Funhouse mirror porn. I guess know? what I was wondering when I read this, though, is that they're like any any simple like Photoshop style program could do this very easily. But there are ways to reverse that, too. So there's always there's yeah. always going to be someone out there that's like, oh, well, they put on this fancy filter that stretches out the image. I'm going to find out the exact stretch that they put and reverse, reverse it. it. There's also the whole civil I mean, liberties and radiation stuff. cancer angle. <laughs> oh, the distorting sure. of the, the image doesn't right. address. Yeah. Yeah. I also just think it, it misses the point. I mean, yeah. it's still invasive. Just because you stretch me out or squish me up doesn't mean that you're not still looking at me naked. Yeah, and if you're going to look at me naked, I want some, you know, royalties for that, yeah. you know? Hey, dispornchen.com is available. I just checked it on Hover. <laughs> We're going to be so rich. Oh, rule 34. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, let's thank Gazelle, our other sponsor today, helping to bring you tech news today. Uh, Gazelle, a great way to get rid of some of your older gadgets, especially if you need a little extra cash as you're going into the holiday season or if you know you're getting that brand new phone this holiday season, you, you have a place where you can get rid of your old one and get a little cash back. Uh, what The way it works, you go to gazelle.com. You type in uh, one of your MP3 players, your ebook reader, your laptop, your camera. They've got 200,000 unique different items in there. Uh, look it up. Find out how much they'd give, it, give you for it based on the condition. Be honest about the condition because they're going to look at it when they get it. And then they'll either give you cash or if they can't give you cash, they'll help you recycle it responsibly. Uh, so you can, once you get a quote, you can print out a mailing label right there and send it off to them. Or if you're lazy like me, wait for them to send you a box uh, and then that has the mailing label. You take it to the post office, mail it off, and they'll deposit money in your PayPal account. They can give you Amazon or Walmart gift card. You actually get a 5% bonus with the Amazon gift card. Uh, or you can ask Gazelle to donate the value of your gadget to a charity if you want. So Kindles, Nooks, 
phones, laptops, e-readers, iPads, iPhones, whatever. You can get some money for them. Check it out at gazelle.com and get 5% more money than you would normally by using the bonus code TNT. That's gazelle.com, bonus code TNT. As they say very punnily, don't just sell it, gazelle it. And I mean it. You should. It's a good way to get money. I've done a few gadgets on there. It's a, it's a great service if you just want an easy way to get rid of all your gadgets. Time for the news, Hughes. <laughs> Looks like the web is not the big bad slayer of newspapers some would like you to believe it is. Uh, rather, dependence on advertising is the culprit. According to researchers at Oxford University, in many countries where online activity is high, like Scandinavia or Germany, newspapers fare quite well, even though people are surfing the web. The problem papers are in the UK and the US, where advertising accounts for a larger proportion of revenues, and the advertising market's been in the crapper lately. Mm -hmm. One more shoe has dropped in the great Google TV blackout. How many feet does it have, anyway? <laughs> Viacom now blocks full episodes from streaming on your Logitech reviews and your Sony Internet TVs and the like, which means no MTV, no Comedy Central, and heavens, no Nickelodeon! What? Of course, that's only if your browser is honest about its identity as Chrome on Google TV, but let's face it, most people aren't going to bother to lie about that. They're not going to tweak that necessarily. <laughs> so, yeah, everything's blocked on Google TV, except for Twit. You can watch Twit. Wee. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Darren. Are you jealous of all those Verizon Fios subscribers? Totes. Well, <laughs> here's some more fuel to the fire. They're getting 150 megabits down. Jerks. Ah. Hate them. 35 megabits up. Ah. Hate them still. And they only have to pay $194.99 with a one-year service agreement and a Verizon wireline voice service. Wow. <gasps> Don't hate them as much now. What? That's a lot of money. A month? 195 yeah. a month. Are you hosing me? <laughs> Dude, hosing no. you with 150 megabytes. It's the yes. Verizon is hosing you in two different ways. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Facebook to handle your messaging now that you get a Facebook.com email address. Huh? Yeah, you're thinking, oh, I'll just use that for my email? Yeah, that sounds email? good. Yeah, sure. Right? Oh, yeah. Well, prepare for a tiny bit of censorship, what? fools. Facebook began blocking BitTorrent link sharing on Facebook walls and news feeds last spring and also started blocking private messages between users that include a link to torrents to the Pirate Bay. And that will continue if you use them as your email client with your Facebook.com email address. There's no legal reason Facebook needs to do this. They just decided they would. Hmm, interesting. You know what else about Facebook, Tom, that you might find interesting? Facebook also wants to be your homepage. I know Dar Darren's, no, who doesn't? Darren's pretty uh, excited about that. Yeah, oh, totally. He's tap dancing over um, there. You can't see him, but he is. The Wall Street Journal reports that Facebook is set to ask its users to make the social network their default homepage, a move that could boost the site's traffic at the expense of Google's. Everybody thinks they're going after Google. They're friends. Yeah. Google and Facebook. <laughs> It was a re uh, it was, uh, it was yeah, yeah, so check it out. <laughs> it was reported back in October that Apple was totally developing this new open SIM card. And allegedly the programmable card would allow iPhone buyers to choose a carrier and activate their service without ever having to go into an AT&T store or another carrier store. Right? Well, it turns out the carriers really didn't like that. In fact, they threatened to stop doing subsidies. And then Apple, well, they've been, quote, sent back to the drawing board with their tail between their legs, said one source to the Telegraph. Mm-hmm. U.S. National Reconnaissance Office has launched what is reputed to be the largest satellite ever dun, dun, into dun. space. The spacecraft was put into orbit on a Delta IV heavy rocket from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station on Sunday. The NRO gave no details about the payload, but... We all know it's that one from know. the 007 movie where the it's satellite the, eats yeah. the other satellite. It's oh, the yeah. eavesdropper. Wait, mm. what? No, no, it's the eavesdropper. I guess that was a capsule that yeah, ate another capsule. Yeah, I don't, yeah. Think, it, I don't think it's that. But it is a, it's probably going to be used to eavesdrop on enemy communications. Hmm. What are they saying about us? I don't know. So I know how you guys were wondering how are you going to charge those Nissan Leafs. How am I going to charge my Nissan Leafs? Exactly. Well, and Energy, I live in Houston now. Right. Energy Energy hopes to install 150 charging stations in the 25-mile vicinity of downtown Houston where you live, Tom. Starting, starting in, in February. February. You'll need to subscribe through the $89 All You Can Juice monthly plan. It'll oh, also include juice. the installation of 240 volt charging sy systems in residences. But you may rather wait for Halo IPT, they have a way to embed wireless charging in roads by 2020 to charge cars as they drive. Those fancy New Zealanders mm. with their Kiwi driving, charging road thingies, I Whatever, hope they make man. it happen. Putting a server farm in my pickup and 
charging up for 89 bucks all you can juice. Does, yeah. it, go, does it go through your rubber tires? I don't know. It doesn't seem... No, no, no. There's a, there's a system where you can you can charge while you're parked. Yeah, right? Like how your palm free yeah. sits it's on the thing. It's kind of like an induction. Yeah, it's similar to that, yeah. yeah. Uh, and so they think they can do it while you're moving. Ooh. So they can put it in the roads. Sweet. But that means we have to electric repave roads, everything. I love it. Yeah. Great. Everything's better electric. Stimulus even plan. RFID boarding passes could be used to track down passengers late for boarding. This is a good idea, right? I'm always late for boarding. Right? Because uh, I'm in the bar and they're like, ten, best lane. 10% of flights in the UK are delayed because someone is last minute boarding. Mm -hmm. uh, and they Probably are, they have in to the bar. They have to, pull their, they have to pull your luggage off if you're not coming to the plane on time. Uh, or they hold the door for you because you're like, wait, wait, I just finished my Mai Tai. Oh, that's what it is. It's the luggage. That's because part I'm like, of it, yeah. oh, Why are they even bothering to wait? It's because then they, it's then more they of a hassle the for them. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you, know what, you know what we do in the U.S.? The plane just flies, and your luggage goes to Hawaii, and you don't. So maybe, Yeah, well, Darren, maybe you shouldn't have had that extra margarita at the bar. Well, maybe I'd take my margarita to the to the... No, I, I guess I don't let you leave with it. But no. anyway, <laughs> like, you know... No. I can bring this on the plane, Maybe right? I just hang out at my... <laughs> At my gate for the for the twenty minutes before they leave. Can I like, get a to go on. cup? Yeah, yeah. So wait a second, Tom. So what are they? There's going to be like airport security saying, "Come with me. We know where you well, are. That's Your what, plane's right. leaving." Everybody's going to be like, "Hey, I've got this fancy RFID thing on my boarding pass so now. now. I can just kick off wherever." No, that's We're, just going to yeah, because people. because especially at that point, so they come and get you at the bar. You've got to settle up. So yeah. that's going to be another five minutes while hey, you like close out your tab. Yeah, if you're that guy, I'll just pay with my RFID chip. Yeah. <laughs> the airport is not going to employ a bunch of people to track down people who are lazier yes. because they know that they can be tracked to make their flights. It's you not going to happen. Also, we, like, I wouldn't want to opt into that kind of tracking anyway. I mean, I understand. Well, you may not be able to have a choice, right? <sighs> they may just put it on all boarding passes. Yeah, uh, well. We are missing the, the cool tech behind this, though. <laughs> uh, the Intelligent Airport, or TINA project, has succeeded in getting 100% accuracy in a, an area of 100 square meters to within four meters of a tag. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. The coverage of 100 square meters is much larger area than has been previously achieved. So, so you get within four meters, Sarah Lane, I'm probably yeah. going to hear you. So this, this is much more accurate RFID scanning than has existed in the past. Mm -hmm. Then that's why I'm glad I got this issued in 2005. Yeah, me too. And to those in the audio version of the you, passport. You can, buy, you can buy a little uh, Faraday cage for your passport, I'm thinking. Ooh, yeah. a Faraday wallet. Yeah. I actually have one of those. There you go. See? <laughs> Falling apart, though. I'd like yeah, Apple you to keep uh, it in, in one release piece an report. app called Find My Passport. <laughs> Back I lose to my, my passport. <laughs> Back to <laughs> my house <laughs> dot com. <Yes. laughs> Is that like an I iPhone app for like uh, drunk stumblers? <laughs> yes, exactly. All right, on to the calendar. All right, Verizon launching the LTE network in December. And all we have to go on is this video. Oh, he's running fast. I get it. Wow, his mailbox is really far. Yeah, from his. That's barn. inconvenient. You should just get email. Lightning fast, lightning strong. Horizon Don't 4G throw it away. LTE. You just got it. Oh. Rule the air on the most advanced 4G wait, wait. network. There it is. World. Coming December 2010. On the screen at the very end of the commercial. Well, yeah. Why is he running when he had a perfectly good Yamaha dirt bike right there? Yeah, the rest of the commercial makes any no god hole in sense. the plot. Because he's practicing for the javelin oh, Olympics. Oh, yeah. We have right. no idea. That's why. Yes. We don't. Agreed. We have no idea when, where, <laughs> how, other than December 2010, somewhere. It's a commercial. Yeah. We all saw it. Uh, except for those of you who are listening to the audio. Voodoo comes to the PS3 tomorrow. That's November 23rd. Woohoo! Nintendo is announcing Black Friday DSi bundles uh, in orange and green. Isn't that right, Tom? Right. The I, colors I would assume the two colors that people want the least. Ireland's flag? Uh, orange and green? Green is definitely in the flag. Yeah, they have the orange bar on the one yeah, side and the green yeah. one. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so, uh, you know, fighting Irish. Uh, listener co-host show is coming up, and what are the details on that bit, bad boy? Well, we don't really have specific details on the date of the uh, co-host interview, but if you would like to talk to the hosts of TNT, this will be your opportunity to be interviewed and just discuss, you know, your favorite tech story of the year, bring you on Skype video and... Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. I will follow up later on this week with details on how you can take part in that for the uh, end of next month. Sweet. 
Also, we want to remind you to help us pick the best moments of Twit and, of course, TNT. Uh, if you go to twit.tv slash best of, you can choose your show. You can choose the, the episode of the show that was a, was a cool moment, funny moment, a, a, a groundbreaking moment in the history of the show. That time that Tom made you laugh, you know, that one time, that one time. in one episode time, 13. Yeah. And it was um, a pun. Yeah, so there's a little form that you fill out and help us find the best moments as chosen by you. On to the voicemail. 260-TNT-SHOW is the number to call and leave a message like this person did. Excuse me, Tom Merritt. This is Matt in Orlando. I'm going to have to subtract 10 each points from you because on episode 120, you talked about the garment story with the Navi language or the Navi language. You completely missed that you can get Navi on your Navi. That's my 10 geek points for sure. Roll again. I would take your negative 10 geek points if you hadn't messed up Nuvi and Navi in your accusation. <laughs> geek LARPing, minus 10 geek, minus 10 geek, minus 10 geek. You guys just canceled each other out. It was beautiful. It was Thank silence. You. I heard nothing. <laughs> you totally canceled each other out. That's weird. <laughs> On to uh, TNT at twit.tv. That's our email address. Uh, and I'm just loving, we're getting all these stories from around Africa of how people are, have different phone markets there. This one comes from Dennis uh, in Nigeria. He says it's the same situation in Nigeria. Everyone has a BlackBerry or is aspiring to get one. The GSM networks are pushing the BlackBerry drive. Uh, the phone is most popular for younger people between 20 and 40 and the blackberry service in nigeria has made communication a bit easier via blackberry chat yahoo msn chat twitter facebook etc so in a way these mobile devices help bridge the gaps uh, some of the gsm network providers give unlimited data access via the blackberry internet service so cool thanks dennis next email from alan he's in north dallas he says our entire company had optiplex gx 260s 270s 280s about five or six years ago and the capacitors popped and bulged and they told us there had been a recall and sent a tech out to replace the entire motherboard the next day each instance but that's because we had the gold tech support enterprise enterprise it took 18 to 24 months before the capacitors started leaking and then we had 36 to uh, 42 month upgrade cycles so we only had a few di dozen out of 200 that actually went bad before we replaced them all but for schools and hospitals who can't afford to upgrade quickly they've been screwed mm. and of course is in reference to friday's story about dell not being entirely truthful about things that don't work not forthcoming, yes. according to court documents. All right. Thanks, everybody, uh, for watching the show. Thanks, Darren, for being on the show. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you, Sarah. And thank you, Jason. Whatever. Yeah, you know. And thank you, Lennon 2010. <laughs> and thank you, Jeannie. <laughs> thank you, Broken LCD. Uncle Big Fat. Thanks, thank you, John, Cam, Dave, yeah. Billy, Johnny. Patrick the Great. Patrick. You're great. Gamer. Miss M. Yeah. Sparkle face. Twit.tv slash TNT 260 TNT show and TNT at twit.tv. We'll see you tomorrow. Tom Weber. Token blind guy. Reuters song. Big Dan. Hunter in the run. Miss M. Freeze. <laughs> <laughs>